The Nintendo 3DS is a homebrew based. But did you know it can also emulate PlayStation 1 games at full speed? Here we have my new 2DS XL running Final Fantasy 7 and Metal Gear Solid almost flawlessly. There are a couple of frames dropped here and there, but otherwise both of these games are perfectly playable and look incredible. This is all made possible via Retro Arc. If you are familiar with the emulation scene, you would have probably heard of this. In a nutshell, it is a front end for emulators, which can be run on a variety of different consoles and systems. And it basically allows us to run a fork of PCSX, a PlayStation 1 emulator, on a modded Nintendo 3DS. The performance is surprisingly very stable. I've tested a bunch of games at this point, which are all running extremely well. I'm going to show you exactly how you can get this up and running for yourself. And I'm going to show you the best settings to get the best possible performance in today's video. Before we get started, there are a couple of things you will need to know beforehand. This will only be possible on a new variant Nintendo 3DS. So if you have one of the older Nintendo 3DS models, unfortunately, it just doesn't have enough juice under the hood to run PlayStation 1 games effectively. Now, your 3DS will also need to be modded and running Luma custom firmware. If your console is not modded yet, I do have a full video guide covering the process in detail, which will be linked in the description down below. You will also need a desktop computer running Windows, Linux or Mac and some way to connect your SD card to the computer. But with all of that out of the way, let's get into it. The first thing you will want to do is remove your SD card from your 3DS and connect it to your computer and then head over to the description of this video and click onto the link for RetroArch and download the RetroArch CIA zip file from within. I should note that I'm not using the latest version of Retro Arc simply because I have had issues with accessing my SD card and so I went back to the previous version which is working great for me. Once you have it downloaded though, extract the zip file into a folder somewhere. Once extracted you should see two folders, Retro Arc and CIA. Open the Retro Arc folder and then open the cause folder from within you'll see a bunch of CIA files. These all represent a bunch of different emulators that you can run through Wet or Arc on your Nintendo 3DS. As I'm only interested in emulating the PlayStation, I'm going to delete all of the other files except for the PCSX CIA file to save space. Once you have done this, your folder should look exactly like mine, unless of course you have identified other emulators that you wish to install. You will now want to copy the entire RetroArch folder onto the root of your SD card. You can ignore the CIA folder as it won't be needed. At this stage you will also want to create a new folder on the root of your SD card. I have already done this and mine is named PS1 as this will be where you will be storing all of your PlayStation 1 games. Now, I can't link you specifically to a place to get PlayStation 1 games, but what I can say is that you should probably look online for something known as the Broms Mega Thread, and from there I'm pretty sure you'll be able to find whatever it is you are looking for. I would also strongly advise that you look for games in the .chd file format, this will greatly improve performance and it will also save storage space on your SD card. The CHD file format is just a compressed file format which works very very well with emulators. One final thing you may want to consider is locating a PlayStation 1 BIOS file. Once again I can't link one of these directly for obvious reasons but it should be pretty easy to locate one online. Once you have the PlayStation 1 BIOS, you will want to create a new folder. I've created my folder within the PS1 folder I mentioned earlier, and I put the BIOS file in there. You can get by without the BIOS, but performance will be better with a BIOS file. 
but it is still possible to proceed without one. At this stage, we've done everything that we need to do on the computer. So go ahead and eject the SD card and insert it back into your console. Boot up FBI and navigate to RetroArch and then to the cause folder. You should now see the PCSX CIA file from earlier. Select it and install it. It's important that you don't install and delete here or delete the PCSX CIA file at some point in the future. This is because RetroArch will need it for the emulator to work correctly. Once this is installed, simply exit out of FBI and you should see PCSX appear as a new app on the home menu. It doesn't for me here simply because I already had it installed. You'll now want to go ahead and open up PCSX. You could go ahead and load up a game here and click off this video, but PCSX doesn't operate too well directly out of the box, but with a few tweaks to some settings, you can get near perfect performance as I demonstrated at the start of this video. And I'm going to show you exactly how to set it all up so that you can do the same. I want to add that full credit for these settings do go to a Reddit thread, which I found them from. I will link the thread in the description down below. The first thing you will want to do is come into settings, video, and then synchronization and disable vSync. Don't do this if you're only planning to play 2D games as the performance will be better in 2D games with vSync enabled. But if you're planning to mostly play 3D games, you will want to keep it disabled. Now come back and select audio and then synchronization and enable it if it is not already enabled. Come back once again and select output and then on the second option select DSP thread. Now come out of the audio settings and down to directory right at the bottom here. Select the top option and locate the folder where you stored your PS1 BIOS file earlier. If you didn't get a BIOS file then obviously just skip this step. Now to proceed further, we will need to load up a game uh, to be able to make some additional changes. Do not skip this part as these changes will offer by far the biggest performance improvement. So to load up a game, go back and select load content and then SDMC. Navigate to the folder that you created earlier on the root of your SD card and load up a game of your choice. Once you have a game loaded up, if you touch the bottom screen, this will open the quick menu, navigate to the options from here and set threaded rendering to async. Come back and enable advanced GPU settings and then enable high res downscaling. Finally, we will want to enable the use of the analog controls. So come back to the quick menu and select controls, then navigate to port one controls and select device type and then DualShock. If you don't do this, then only the D-pad will work. At this point, you will now want to fully restart PCSX for these changes to come into effect. But that is basically it. You now have PlayStation 1 games running at full speed on your new Nintendo 3DS. Something I personally never truly thought would be possible. This has been achieved nonetheless by the incredible homebrew community surrounding this fantastic console. But that is going to do it for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you enjoyed it, I would appreciate if you could leave a like rating on the video and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with future episodes. But other than that, thank you all for watching and I will catch you all on the next one.